In this video, we're going to discuss resonance and resonance structures. So one thing I want to make clear from the beginning is that, you know, these Lewis, this Lewis dot model is a model and there are some deficiencies in that model. And one of the main deficiencies of just the Lewis dot model alone is that it implies that these electrons are localized, right? It, it implies that the electron is localized around a bond, localized in lone pairs around a single atom. And this makes for a good model to understand bonding and reactivity. But in reality, electrons are delocalized throughout the entire molecular framework, and they can technically be anywhere. Right. Um, there are certain regions of space that they are confined to, but those regions of space can stretch along multiple different atoms. And so that's not really captured just in the Lewis dot model alone. But one way that we make up for this deficiency in the Lewis dot model is with the concept of resonance. So what am I talking about? Let's look at an example to highlight the concept of resonance. So the example I want to look at is the CO2 two minus ion. Right. So we got CO2 or CO3, excuse me, CO3, two minus. So CO3 with a negative two charge. Right. So, again, to construct the Lewis structure, we want to ask ourselves how many valence electrons are present. So how many valence. Right. So for the carbon atom, we got four valence electrons for that guy. Plus, we got three oxygens. Right. Um, and there are going to be six uh, valence electrons for each oxygen. So three times six accounts for the three oxygens. Now, we also have a negative two charge. Right. Remember what I said with ions. If you have an ion, that means you need to either add or subtract electrons for an anion, a negatively charged uh, molecule. That means we need to add electrons to this valence total. So that means we're going to have to add two here. So. Four plus three times six plus two. That's going to give us a total of 24 valence electrons, right? So we got 24 valence here. And oh, and let me annotate this plus two accounts for the minus two charge. Right, since we're we have a negative two charge overall, we have to add those two electrons. OK, cool. So now we want to connect the atoms. Connect the atoms form the bonds. So um, we'll have the carbon in the center here, got an oxygen attached to it in all directions, right? So adding those three oxygen uh, bonded to the carbon, right? So we've accounted for six electrons here, right? So we still got 18 electrons that we need to account for. Now, we can fill carbon's octet by forming a double bond with one of these oxygens and then complete the Lewis structure by just filling in the lone pairs for all of the oxygens. Right. And then, like I said, for ions, I like to put this parentheses and minus two charge to indicate that we have a negative two charge on the total molecule. OK, cool. So that's a valid Lewis structure there, but it's actually not the only valid Lewis structure. Think about it. If we can double bond this oxygen, what's the difference between doing it with this oxygen versus the other oxygens? Right. Let's let's take a look at an example of that. Right. So if we do the same structure here, right, we connect all our oxygens. Boom, boom. Right. But instead, we do a double bond here. Right. Got two lone pairs. Right. This structure is just as valid, right? We've got all the octets filled. We've got the correct number of total valence electrons. This one's equally as valid as this one, right? So you can kind of have that one or that one. Um, and likewise, we can do it with the other oxygen as well, right? So have my carbon here, connect the oxygens and double bond to this one, right? Add in my lone pairs. Right. Negative two charge overall. Right. This one is just as valid as well. Right. This is just as valid of a Lewis structure as any of the other two that I've drawn. So then the question is, which of these Lewis structures are correct? Right. The, 
one where we double bond one at the top, the right or the left? Which one is correct? Well, the answer to that question is none of them are technically correct by themselves. All three of these structures are known as resonant structures. Right. What we're showing here is that these um, electrons that are used in this bond between carbon and oxygen can delocalize throughout the entire structure. They're not involved in just one bond. They're more or less delocalized throughout the entire structure here. Right. So the true structure is not necessarily one of these alone. It's all three of them kind of average together. So if you're looking at online sources, one thing that you might see, you might see um, resonant structures drawn in the following way, right? So let me draw this right here. Like you might see resonant structures drawn in this way where you have like a dashed line for each of the potential, the, the potential resonance bonds, right? Um, I don't like doing this. Uh, because it's not proper resonance structure. It's more of a shorthand for organic chemistry, but I know if you're looking at other online sources, you may see this. I don't want to see this at all, <laughs> but um, you may see this in online sources, so don't be confused by it, right? They're just trying to represent this bond, uh, this bonding framework for these resonance structures. Okay, so let me get rid of that guy. Okay, so um, so how do we know that this is representative of the actual molecule. Well, uh, what we'll notice, let's, let's look at a few um, average bond lengths. All right, let's look at some average CO bond lengths. All right, so for a carbon oxygen single bond, the average length of that is about 143 picometers, right? So remember, bonds are really super, super small. So uh, 143 picometers for a carbon oxygen single bond. A carbon oxygen double bond has a length of about 123 picometers. And a carbon oxygen triple bond has a length of about 109 picometers. So using this, can you kind of guess what the uh, bond would be in CO3, uh, two minus in this ion? So the bond length for this guy is actually going to be somewhere between a single bond and a double bond. Each of these CO bonds in CO3, two minus are going to have the same length. And that bond length is going to be about 136 picometers. Right, so somewhere between a single and double bond for this CO bond and, and CO3, right? Um, so that kind of shows you that this bond isn't necessarily a single bond or double bond. It's somewhere between the two. It's uh, a resonance bond built by the de delocalization of these electrons throughout the molecular framework, right? So a lot of times you'll be asked questions to this regard of, you know, uh, draw all of the possible resonance structures for a given molecule. And, and you'll be tasked with figuring out how many different ways can you distribute the electrons in this molecule while still maintaining the same valid structure. And the structure is not different, right? Not a unique structure from a structural standpoint, right? Um, so that's what we've done here. This uh, CO3 two minus would have three resonance structures with the double bond being distributed uh, between each of the oxygens.